Outlaw Sports is brought to you by Molson Canadian, made from Canada, and Rocky Mountain Barbecue, Alberta barbecue cuisine at its best. So Ian, tell me what the hell's going on in the CFL, because uh, if I was a betting man, I would have lost all kinds of money this weekend. Uh, first of all, I uh, was not surprised, though, uh, with the BC win in Saskatchewan. However, I was surprised at how bad the Riders crapped the bet. Yeah, that was a wilting. Yeah. Uh, that air came out of that balloon pretty quickly. The, uh, the interesting thing is that, man, the, uh, the BC Lions can really stick a fork in people now. They, yeah. they really know how to push the, the buttons and, you know, 100-yard touchdown, that's, that's uh, one of those things where it's just a crushing blow. And the Riders are in trouble with their defense, obviously. When Lance Frazier goes out and he's one of your best, most yeah. unheralded uh, defensive players, uh, that's tough to play. They, they moved guys around. James Patrick was out of position, and he, he didn't do he well there. He looked awful. Yeah. He, awful. Well, he's not, that's yep. not his spot. He, I know. He's supposed to be a, he's a safety, and they've got Craig Butler at safety, and they moved him down to linebacker, and now he's over a halfback. Uh, he was an all-Canadian safety last yes. year. So they've, they've screwed up that situation. Uh, offensively, they're just all over the map, and Fan 2 is going out. That shouldn't have made that much of a difference. They're but used to. It should be used yeah, to. They yeah, should have been, they yeah. should have been fine. They won the first game, uh, the Labor Day game, without him. Uh, but he was standing on the sidelines and coming back and so having all that energy. Half? Yeah, I know. He's, he's hardly <laughs> played. And they, yeah. they just uh, seem to let it all f fall apart there. But that, that one's one of those games where it's just it's, it's amazing how quickly something, all the passion and energy at the opening kickoff and all the excitement, and then they go down the field on a seven-minute drive. Yeah score the touchdown and then phew, it was this, like they this, ran out of pilsner yeah well yeah it's just okay yeah. well that's over we're yeah. down we're down by seven it's done it's like they quit allowing uh watermelon helmets into the stands <laughs> all the all the energy was gone uh then you look at a couple of other games uh well the montreal win over edmonton uh, you know you looked at that and wasn't you know uh, now Cavill is a little shaken up. Who knows how, if he'll miss the next game or how long he'll be. Well, he sounds like he might be okay, yeah. but you know what the thing is with concussions. Yep. It's a day-to-day -day thing, and you don't know. Uh, it's tough. He took a hard shot, and he said he was out on the field. Scary for them, but they really pulled it together with uh, Adrian McPherson going in that ball game and moving the ball. He brings such a different dynamic that when you prepare all, all week for Calvillo, yep. and suddenly McPherson's coming in and he's running all over the place, uh, it can throw the defense off quite a bit. They, they did a good job of uh, keeping their, their focus together and getting that win in Edmonton. Uh, home teams have no advantage this year. Yeah. Uh, it's even still yeah. um, now that Hamilton actually won uh, in Moncton. So when you think of the, the way that the, the races are shaking up, I have no idea how it's going to go week to week. You know, Last week you think these guys are on upswing and then suddenly everybody's down and these guys are up and then it's just a roller coaster. And yeah. It's fun, but uh, we'll see what now – the biggest question is if Anthony Calvillo is hurt and misses some games, and if Buck Pierce has got to sit out some weeks, which is probably going to happen because he's yep. going to have to sit out eventually, the East Division is now Hamilton's for the taking. <laughs> Where last week we were sitting here thinking, well, Hamilton has lost two. They're sinking like a stone. They're going to be worried about Toronto. One win and two other losses. It's just Who knows? Yeah. I mean, Winnipeg losing two. I know Winnipeg's banged up a little bit right now, but... Toronto's Toronto. Who in the hell do they think they are yeah. defeating the Winnipeg Blue Bombers? <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> yeah, they are who we, they're not who we thought they were, is that other words. Okay, I want to talk to you quickly uh, about uh, the Moncton experience because uh, that was not a sellout. And no. if you want, I mean, what the hell else do you do in Moncton other than fish and, and listen to Rankin family albums? I mean, it was a beautiful day. It wasn't a sellout, yet they think they can host a CFL team, not like that. Well, the one thing they do in Moncton is drink and party, and I found that out pretty hard. The thing is that... I we just discovered, so did the stance. Yeah, I just, I don't know if <laughs> this was sort of expected that they wouldn't have as many people excited about this game as last year's game, because last year was the first, yep. and it hadn't been there, and it was the very much a, a pride thing. They came out, they packed the stands, and they weren't treated to a good football game. This one was at least entertaining. Uh, it's, yeah, it's disappointing, and it doesn't sound like the CFL is going to go back there for next season. They've got a busy next season, is what uh, Commissioner Kohan said. They've got the 100th anniversary of the Grey Cup. They've got a lot of events all year long that they want to plan. So they're probably going to skip Moncton next year, but then 2013 will be an experiment because Hamilton needs a home probably for the first couple of months of the season. 
if they play three or four games there, maybe they can build some interest. But I just see that as it's, it's too small of an area and it's too far from everything else to, to really gain an interest. Uh, and being in the Atlantic time zone just has a huge difference. Yeah. We had to stay up till 1.30 in the morning to catch the end of the, of the game in, in Edmonton. And that wasn't a late game. Yep. So it, it's hard. Yep. It's hard to, if, you're te- if, you're, if you have a team in Moncton and they're playing in BC and the kickoff time is 11.30 Atlantic time, yep. that, who's going to watch that game? You can't. Yeah. You can't What's stay that, up like that late. Four thirty and yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, but you're going to stay up till three, three thirty in the morning to watch. Yeah. You're either going to be way too drunk at that point to even know what's going on, or you're just going to be asleep. Now, what about the uh, conditions of the field? Not the best. Terrible. Yeah. Uh, I I walked that grass and I said I can't believe they played on this. I'm looking at there's patches of brown and some nice green spots and then other rough hard. Uh, not an easy situation, but it turned into a track meet, and obviously they found the right footing. The guys had an, enough speed together to get uh, 10 touchdowns total. So, uh, And then the end zones, they're a little bit lower, so you come off the grass, it's downhill. <laughs> yeah, hilarious. Yeah. So when you're throwing a touchdown downhill, literally it was, you know, yeah. it was awful. Uh, they have to figure it out. If they're going to have a permanent team there, they have to get rid of the grass and put a artificial sure, surface yeah. in there. The funny thing is the kickers uh, were convinced that the yard markers are incorrect and it's about a 115 yard field, not 110. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's a little extra on every yard. So that's why when, <laughs> when Rene was running, lining up for his 48 yard field goal, I, uh, into the wind, this is more like a 55. Yeah. And he, he had the distance, but it, he just didn't have it correctly. And uh, yeah. that was a tough one, so. And really quick, uh, quickly, just one uh, final comment. They talked again about the expansion uh, for 13 uh, in Ottawa. Are you buying into this? Do you think Ottawa is a viable thing again? I mean, three time a charm, is that how you're looking at it? Well, I'd like to think that the Ottawa is going to finally get it together. They, they have the right ownership group. We've been told that so many times. They've, they've just been delayed in their stadium plans and that's taken forever. And if, if 13 is the year, I'm hoping, I'm not expecting it, yeah. uh, I'm expecting the year after, but maybe they can figure out a succession plan, get it to 10 teams. Nine teams is terrible. Yeah. Uh, somebody off, somebody on a bye week every week just throws everybody out of whack, or somebody's playing Wednesday and Sunday, and that's just awful too. Yeah. So uh, I remember the days of uh, the nine team uh, league from 2004, 2002 to 2005 or when it was. Uh, it was awful, and it, Stamps had uh, the first week by in 2005, yeah. and then the last week by in 2006. Yeah. Well, that was that worked out well for them. <laughs> one, one league, one conference. The best teams win. I've been saying it for years, but yeah. no at one least but they Grant have a, Pollock listens to yeah, me. Yeah, at right, least Gene? they have a somewhat balanced <laughs> schedule like other yeah. leagues, right? Yeah. Uh, at least everybody plays everybody else yeah. at least twice. Thanks, brother. Always right. great. Tired of going to redneck barbecues? Well, you better call Rocky Mountain Barbecue. Alberta barbecue cuisine at its best. Great tasting food, clean and efficient service. Check us out online or call Rocky Mountain Barbecue. <laughs>